Okay, the garage is a little bit of a mess. I have to, I've got a lot of half finished jobs and we'll sort of work around things. Um, this is that uh, little model I made. Uh, this is a full one inch by uh, three and a half inch piece of PVC lumber. I ended up for this project buying um, two 10 footers. And I figured that's gonna be enough to do the rungs and everything. Everything's sort of haphazard there because I was using the chop saw and had to try and steady things. What I've done, oops, this goes like this. You can see I've made, I'm going to have a rung down at the bottom. If you can imagine, this is a rung here, seven inches, a rung here, a rung here, a rung here. So I'm going to have four rungs. And at the top, this is where I'm going to have a cross brace. So uh, one, two, three, four rungs. Uh, what I'm going to do is I've got the two laid out like this and I'm thinking ways to do it I could use the table saw I don't have a rotor currently I've got a rotor stuck in a, uh, in a uh, rotor table but I've got my CNC rotor here and I do have videos if you're watching this on the hobo channel I do have some of the uh, uh, well I do have some rotor videos on stuff I do with this but I'm going to use the rotor in a manual mode to traverse back and forth and uh, I'll put a, that's right now is a little conical pointed bit. I'm going to put a little small um, sort of like end mill bit and I'm going to track back and forth and I'm going to make four grooves. And just so I can recess the, uh, the, the rungs, of the, the steps of the ladder, the rungs of the ladder, uh, I'll probably recess them in a quarter inch of the one inch thickness, maybe a hair less. So I'm going to set this up now. There we have it, the two uh, side rails of the swim ladder are laid up here side by side. You can see they line up, I'll be cutting across here, I'll be milling across here, here, here. And I've got this little board here just to space them out so that when my router bit goes through, it can clear across into space, back and forth. And I'll be manually controlling the uh, the motions back and forth in incrementing and uh, I'll be using this end mill. It's not very big, is it? But it's a nice flat cor uh, flat uh, tip and it'll take many passes and we'll go across and I'll be putting that in the collet right here. So that's the next step. Okay, I now have the uh, flat bottom milling bit in the Rotor, that's a one horsepower Bosch rotor. I got manual actuation of that. That's not the original spindle. And if you want to know more about the machine and setup and things like that, uh, check elsewhere on the channel. I have maybe three videos or so on some projects and I may be adding some soon. But so here, we're gonna mill across here, a few passes across there, a few here, a few here, a few passes here to make a one inch wide slot, about a quarter inch deep. I'm gonna try doing it all uh, I might end up doing an eighth inch passes. So I might go uh, do an eighth inch of depth and then go an additional eight inch, uh, eighth of an inch of depth. So first of all, uh, and I'm not showing you here that the keypad here, but I'll show, show you that in a moment, but uh, I can, uh, this is the Z axis and bring it down. I'm going to establish a home point that I can always return to. And this is X, I'm going to cross across here and Y I'm going to that's the coarsest axis and I'm going to get a piece of cardstock because this is how I sort of help zero um, come across an X a little bit. Uh, I gotta bring her up. Ah, wrong up. That's the up. X minus. Okay, so I'll just come down a bit. Oh, it's just a fussy little thing here. There, I know my zero is about. That's about zero. I'm going to treat that as zero. Okay, that's part of an old antenna, airplane antenna just fell down. Anyhow, um, I'm going to back up the X just a little bit. 
And just so I can find it, I'm following that home. And I'll show you what I do here. So all I do is enter to set org. Oh, sorry. I have to... Okay. Enter. Enter again. Zero, zero, zero. So I can find that point. I can tell them now when I go down Z or Z, uh, I'm looking for eventually a quarter millimeter. Okay. So I'm just going to go down a quarter inch rather. So I'll be going down about six millimeters. And, uh, but I might do it, first of all, with three. So I'm going to go down three. Let's go 3.5. Approximate is good for now. And that is that. If we look around here, yeah, we're nudging right up beside that. I'm going to actually back up the exit here. Okay. And bingo. I'll set this down and we'll try and cut. Now this might be noisy. Okay, Z. Okay, we'll traverse X back this way. Okay, you can get the general idea. So I'm going to continue uh, indexing this axis, the Y, and just move it that way a little bit. And then I'm going to traverse across. And then I'll move the axis again, and I'll traverse across. And I'll get to the one inch point. This is my scrap piece. It's a gauge block. I'll keep going until that will fit in the groove snugly. And that's when I stop. And I'll move up and then I'll work on this groove right here. But right now I'm going just uh, three millimeters deep. I'll be going over it a second time after I get it to the established width or close to it. Uh, I'm going to go to full depth and then, and then finish the width, I guess. So anyhow, this is all about making a ladder, but you get to see a fun little tool here. I thought I'd use it. So... Okay, it's all three millimeters deep, and you can see it's very close. I just need to increment this just a little bit more. Yeah, we're going to go for a millimeter and a half. So at a millimeter and a half, roughly 21, I'm going to go to 22. 22.2. Uh, 23, no, it's not very accurate. It's really... Uh, Tough to get it on. 20, I had it before. It's just trial and error. 22.6. I don't want that. 21.8. We'll try that. Uh, we'll try that. Uh, I had a little boo-boo right here where I bumped it out too far. But that's okay. I'm going down another 3 millimeters now. So... Look at the Z or the Z. I'm going to go to minus 5.9, roughly. Actually, minus 6. So we're going to go... And this has a finer feed on it, so I can get it more accurately. Uh, minus 3. We'll go... We'll take that. 
We'll go X plus. There we go. Okay, done one groove. It's a little wide, but that's okay. It'll get the support. It'll be screwed in with some stainless screws. So three more to go. And I think on the next ones, I'm going to go full six millimeter depth rather than do two passes because one horsepower can handle it. And uh, sometimes the bit will get hot and on plastics will do funny things. It will melt and make funny chips and weld up stuff onto the bit. But this PVC cuts pretty, pretty uh, freely. Uh, and I wish now, since I'm doing four of them, I should have written a little program, but uh, G code program, and I could have just executed it four times. But uh, I'm lazy. I didn't want to do the writing and then the troubleshooting. Okay, let's do three more, and then we'll get on with constructing um, our ladder. That's cutting six millimeters deep, no problem. Okay, I'm on the uh, second groove, the second slot for a ladder rung, and I'm just showing you the six uh, or the one eighth millimeter end mill, and we're six millimeters deep, and I'll just show you a pass, show you what it's doing. I continue doing that. I index it to get different width, uh, you know, to increase the width. And I'm looking there. I'm not quite there yet. This is my gauge block, a one inch scrap piece. And uh, if I did this again, if I was doing more than four, I think that's a tipping point where I'd probably just write a little program and I could just execute the program four times. But for now, I'm just doing it totally and manual. Okay, the second rung is done. That fits in nice and secure. It'll be secured with the uh, stainless steel screws from the back. So that's good. I have third one and a fourth one to do. Okay, the four sets of grooves are done. And uh, now we go and, ah, come on. Okay, the pinion on the bottom is dirty. And I did not. I've got to take it apart and wipe it down. You see how much uh, fluff you make uh, or sawdust. Uh, this is, and there's a lot of super fine stuff too. That's why I have a plastic uh, enclosure over this thing that I can pull down when I run it in automatic. But, you know, today I did some manual cutting. So I'll just unclamp it and we'll take it to the workbench and figure out what I need to do next. Okay, already this is just loose assembled. And we keep it square here with uh, this when we assemble it. And we're going to use some nice stainless screws, Robertson head.